Hey everyone, welcome back. This is a video I've intentionally been waiting to make alongside all the other new weapons from Veilbreaker. But many of you have been asking me for them and when they would be out. So this is my simple take on our newest machete, Slaytra. It looks pretty cool and is undeniably our strongest machete currently in game. Of course, you can get more interesting sat lines for specific uses by making a Za machete instead. But for an out of the box, ready made weapon that doesn't need you to pull out a calculator to min max a specific use case, which is really only useful for endurance, this is basically the king of machetes, bar ribbons. Yes, I know it has garbage disposition. I also assume if you're looking into ribbons, you'd know that disposition matters more than base stats, and would know not to pick this as your ribbon machete. I also don't make ribbon builds often because it isn't useful to my general viewer base. Does it have any cons though? It is our slowest machete, but only by a tiny bit. In exchange, it has the highest crit, status, and most importantly, base damage by a large margin. The final con is it being only 50% slash. Normally, this would be the perfect candidate for a Karnas mandible setup, but I would say this is actually optional on the Slaytra, because of how strong it is as a melee. For base steel path, Karnas improves the likelihood of proccing slash by increasing the slash weight. It would boost Slaytra from 50 to 65.5% slash, and for a weapon that can kill with 1 to 2 slash procs, whereas the raw damage on a non element setup is negligible against armor, this can result in better TTKs. However, since Slaytra is also the slowest machete and machetes are not exactly a fast archetype to start with, I would rather double mod attack speed to make it more comfortable to use. Therefore, you will not be seeing me using Karnas Manable today. Let's talk about stances next. Machetes have only two stances available for normal play, with the third one being PvP exclusive. I'm gonna go over the less popular Cyclone Kraken first. Most people only use the forward melee and neutral melee on stances. For those purposes, Cyclone is almost comparable to the better Sundering Weave stance. It even has the headshot attack on the neutral combo at the start instead of later. However, the neutral combo is backloaded on damage, meaning if you interrupt the combo early or do something else, you're losing a large portion of your damage. The neutral combo on Cyclone is also significantly slower to execute and relative attack speed to Sundering, making it feel clunky due to extensive animation locks. It does have better horizontal coverage than Sundering, but there is a way around this I will explain later. The forward melee on Cyclone actually has better horizontal than Sundering, however it does slightly interrupt your movement and slows you down. It's an all around okay combo with very similar DPS to Sundering's equivalent. We don't talk about the neutral block combo or the forward block combo on Cyclone Kraken as they are complete dog shit in hitbox and animation locks. Now how about Sundering Weave? As mentioned earlier, the neutral melee combo on Sundering has a smaller horizontal hitbox than Cyclone. However, it's still a horizontal hitbox. It has the headshot downswing later in the combo and the combo is also very short to execute with minimal animation locks and most importantly doesn't backload its damage as heavily as Cyclone. Therefore, interrupting combos results in less DPS loss. The combos are also shorter, meaning you are less likely to interrupt and can just complete the full rotation before moving on. It also straight up has 25% more DPS than the neutral melee on Cyclone and is also the highest raw DPS combo in general on machetes. The forward melee combo as mentioned also has a smaller horizontal hitbox than Cyclone, but again, it is actually horizontal. It also doesn't interrupt forward movement like Cyclone did. But here's the stinger, both the block combos on Sundering are actually usable. The forward block combo starts with a spin, with a 200% force proc slash on it. You can use this to supplement your neutral melee combo. If you want more AoE around you that even surpasses Cyclone's combo options, it would be an interrupt rotation of two neutral melees then one forward block combo to initiate the spin and rinse and repeat. I would only advise this against trash mobs and not for endurance, nor acolytes or Xmas units, but it is the fastest way to clear trash fodder around you for a KPM on base steel path. It is not exactly intuitive to use and may take some practice, so if you don't like this combination of merging combos, don't feel bad for just mashing E on Sundering instead. It still does work well enough. Finally, the neutral block combo is just one big hit. This doesn't really have much of a use since a neutral combo does more DPS, but well, if you wanted a simple single big hit, this is it. Finally, the last thing that makes Slaytra unique is its passive. It doubles the duration of bleeds procced by the weapon. Does it literally double our final status duration? Or does it add an innate plus 100% status duration like a mod? The funny thing is, we still don't know. This passive still doesn't work almost one month 
after Veilbreaker has dropped. This is what I've been waiting for to get patched, and the reason why I've been delaying my Veilbreaker weapon videos. It's a very simple patch, and yet apparently looking into and patching Bing Chilling Chroma and related bullet attractor fun times, and ghost patching Azuma discs to no longer consider ammo efficiency are more important than this. There's been videos made by multiple other creators since Veilbreaker launch about the Slaytra mentioning the passive still being bugged, and one month later, it still is. For normal content, this passive is irrelevant. For even endurance runs, if Trash Fodder takes over 6 seconds of you hacking way at it to die, you have a build problem. This only comes into play for slashes that need to last past 6 seconds. The only legitimate use for slash duration are Expedite suffering Demless nuking builds. This is because status duration is considered a final multiplier, as Expedite takes all pre-existing slash procs and their full remaining duration condenses it into a single hit and applies it all at once, while removing all of the slash procs. Therefore, double duration means double the damage. I actually have an Expedite build for Slaytra already today, I'll show you at the end, because, well, the passive still doesn't work, so I'll show it at the end. But this would make Slaytra one of, if not the best, Expedite Suffering melee, excluding Revens, to kill a Demolus with, because of the free bonus slash proc duration. And for those of you asking about Ash. No, we also don't know if it's additive or multiplicative to a slash duration passive because, well, it's still bugged and doesn't work. So hopefully DE finally fixes this in the near future and restores the weapon's identity. Okay, melee builds. This is simple. Slaytra is a slash melee and does not have the stats to support a raw corrosive setup. It's also 0.7 follow through, so I would highly not advise building corrosive on it since it would still have to deal with armor. Keep in mind, all my video content is always benchmarked against Steel Path unless explicitly stated otherwise. Sure, Eclipse, Roar, Breach, Surge would let a Krosa build work, but this is a weapon benchmark showcase, not a frame loadout showcase. There's a reason this weapon is in the weapon build playlist and not Warframe build playlist. Splash is definitely the way to go. I will also be using external primers since using a primer with a melee always results in higher KPM. I don't care if you like using primers or not, I prefer to showcase the best way you can use a specific weapon, however unusual the application will be. Refusing to use a primer because you don't like it is not a good reason for me to stop showcasing how a melee works with a primer. This means the weapon builds available today are a light attack build, a heavy attack build, and an expedite suffering build to kill demolists. The primer is a generic epitaph for new core setup. It doesn't really matter how you mod it so long as it has viral and generally radiation to enable friendly fire aggro. Alternatively, you could run heat or electric instead of radiation, but it has a lesser crowd control effect. Epitaph also has bonus of force cold procs, and Prime Fall Nation is not needed on it since we're killing with melee. Melee lacks the AoE clear potential that ability nukes have, meaning using a mod to prime a massive area is wasted mod space and effort. Augur mods are always handy for shield gating, as well as a Augur Seeker to add a little bit of extra status duration. Epitaph should be using Pistol Ammo Mutation and the Exilus. Nucor can also use Mutation or Holster Reload so the magazine refills while melee. It's up to you based on your ammo usage needs. Bringing Dexterity Arcanes on your pistol and also your primary to add 15 seconds extra combo duration to your Slaytra, bringing it to base 20 seconds without having to waste any mod space on the melee. Neramon is obviously a top pick for power spec to maintain combo decay, but you can safely skip this for a different school when playing survival due to the constant inflow of enemies. For a light attack build on Steel Pass Survival where kills are constant, I would run Berserker Fury here. For Steel Path Disruption, I would recommend running Prime Fury instead, since significant downtime can occur between mobs in another group or reaching the Demless itself. Condition Overload is self-explanatory since we are using primers. Both Epitaph and New Core can easily apply 4 or more status effects instantly, meaning you will get at least 320% base damage out of Condition Overload, while also saving mod slots for much needed attack speed on a slow weapon archetype. Prime Breach more than doubles range from 2.5 to 5.5 meters. This makes it much easier to build combo and kills enemies quickly as well as spreading slash procs everywhere. Slash bypasses armor, so even a single slash proc or two is enough to kill enemies in front of you. Those behind will die to just a few more and if the enemies in front of you are dead, the ones in the back now have reset follow through and are taking the full initial damage to scale slash procs, even if they're still 5 meters away. This also helps for when enemies are more loosely spread out, where you will still only hit 2 or 3 enemies with a single swing when otherwise you would have hit 0. 
weeping because Slaytra has a monstrous base 35% status, which scales to 189% at 12x combo. Blood Rush pushes you to 113.4% crit chance, which is more than enough. Orange and red crits are pretty, but the most important part is actually reaching yellow crits consistently to make sure all damage is 3.6 times instead of 1 times. Orange crits would only boost you to 6.2 times, which is a relative only 1.72 times damage increase over yellow crits. Hence diminishing returns and why I always say forcing red crits with mods on a weapon that can't reach it naturally is always a DPS loss. You always want to boost the weakest parts of the weapon, which is why we're going double attack speed instead of attack speed with Gladiator Might for better crits. The weapon is already strong enough when it hits, however the feel and animation locks are immensely improved quality of life with attack speed. Finally, we mod Prime Smite because this is a slash dot build and Prime Smite's double dip on dots, meaning instead of 1.55 times more damage on bleeds, it will do 2.4 times more damage. This is actually the strongest mod on the build after condition overload. For a heavy attack build, not too many things change. I chose to slot Prime Fury because kill frequency on heavy attack builds are completely random. This setup is actually independent of combo count. I would strongly recommend using it at 12x combo, but the decision to slot Sacrificial Steel is important. Because the weapon only has 21% base crit chance, you don't reach 100% crit until at least 11x combo on Blood Rush. Therefore, I've opted for Sacrificial Steel to ensure every single heavy attack always crits, as it gains double effect on heavy attack to 440% mod crit, which is equal to a 12x combo Blood Rush. This makes it weaker to use as a normal melee spam, however the reliability of at least critting is more important to me. This is because there are no ways left to get 90% heavy attack efficiency unless you're using an incarnate on melee perk or stack focus energy. Because only a tiny portion of melee heavy attacks force proc slash, it is strongly not recommended to use focus energy, since it will massively dilute the amount of slash procs the heavy attack will naturally deal. I still expect you to use this with a primer for maximal effects, and Reflex Cold replaces Quickening, since we no longer need to double stack attack speed as it is only used to build combo instead of KPM. Prime Reach is extremely important because the heavy attack hitbox is a horizontal disc, therefore increasing range increases hit radius, and results in a squared hitbox area increase. Slotting Prime Reach on Slaytra increases the circular hitbox by 4.84 times. Yes, it's that big. Amalgamorgan Shatter gives up a tiny bit of crit damage to cut our heavy attack wind up from 0.7 seconds to just 0.4. But it's actually 0.4375 seconds rounded down, though this is enough for it to be comfortable to use and I wouldn't recommend using an additional slot for killing blow. Especially with Condition Overload already on the build. If you really don't want to use a primer for this, then well, slot Killing Blow as you want. Just keep in mind, removing CO will reduce your damage by over 4 times due to lacking Viral and lacking the base damage scaling from no Condition Overload. The last build today, as I mentioned before, is an Expedite Suffering Slaytra. Expedite Suffering Slaytra functions by spamming Light Attacks, whether on Endurance Enemies or Steel Pad Demolists. Do not use heavy attacks on this build, as you don't get that many slash procs out of it and instead just kill with big procs, which defeats the entire point of this to start with. Spamming light attacks actually results in higher damage if you can turn all of the procs that are supposed to bleed out into one at once, which is exactly what Expedite Suffering does. Expedite Suffering is a helmet ability you can put on any frame after unlocking at level 9 helmet. It takes all toxin and bleed procs on an enemy adds all of the damage together into a single hit, and then even multiplies it further by your modded Warframe strength. So having 200% strength means it takes this massive hit and multiplies it by 2 before dealing it to the enemy. Therefore, with 100% strength, you only need to deal enough damage in bleeds and toxin procs to kill the enemy if you waited the full 6 seconds. Then if you cast Expedite, it's dead instantly. Even less damage is required if you mod strength. Because this setup is meant for steel pad demolists, and I don't know how long it will take for you to get there, I'm bringing Prime Fury instead of Berserker Fury. We are double stacking this with Quickening since the goal is to stack as much slash procs as possible. Range is useless since the main purpose of this setup is for demolists, bring something else to clear trash fodder better, or deal with having no range. I've instead slotted Lasting Sting to add plus 110% status duration to Slaytra. Using a primer will once again result in at least 320% base damage, as well as applying Viral, which is why primers are so important. Whether Slaytra's passive is multiplicative to the final modded status duration, we still don't know. This means this Slaytra build either has 310% status duration if it's additive, or 420, 
Nice. Percent status duration if it's multiplicative. Either way, this means the total damage combined into Expedite Suffering will be 3.1, or 4.2 times higher than normal once the passive is fixed, then multiplied by Strength. So yeah, it's absolutely monstrous. Pram Smite is an obvious choice since bleeds double dip in them for 2.4 times more damage, and you should really be a 12x combo when hitting the Demolus, which means 189% status and 113.4% crit. The damage in the clips you've been seeing is with the bugged passive, so expect the damage to be significantly higher once it works. And there you go, a full breakdown of our newest melee, Slaytra. How compared to other machetes, the best stances and why, how its passive works, how it's still bugged, and three different Slaytra builds for three completely different uses. Hopefully this helps you out and answers all the questions people have had for me regarding it. Cheers! If this is your first time watching, feel free to leave a like or better yet subscribe. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments. 79.5% of you are not subscribed. I'm trying my best to get new information out always as soon as possible like I've done with the Veilbreaker update. Stick around if you want to see interesting memes and builds on a nearly daily basis. You won't miss out on any of that, do you? That'll be it for this video. Thank you all for watching and see you all next time.